Hey guys, really quick, I wanted to let you guys know that I am streaming on Twitch recently. It would mean a lot to me if you went over and checked out the stream. It helps support me and the channel and lets you interact with me live if you'd like. Anyways, thanks guys, and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Yukino RL here, and I'm back with a Skyrim uh, tutorial. And today's Skyrim tutorial is going to be how to get one of the most efficient or best starts in the game. It's going to be quite the video, there's going to be a little bit to take in, but I'm going to go on an in-depth tour on how to get one of the greatest starts in the game. So basically, we just started, I went through the tutorial, I came out of Helgen Keep, and just follow the road right down here, and you're going to come over onto this little pass. And then I usually grab all of the um, potion ingredients or the resources to make potions as I'm making my way over the hill. And you're just going to want to head south towards this cave icon on the mini-map. And you can go ahead and collect all these beads for alchemy. I'm not going to bother right now because there's just a lot. But if I was playing a normal playthrough, I would definitely gather all of these bees. And I think one of them just set off a bear trap. <laughs> Jesus. But you come over here and there's a skill book for the refugees. If you go ahead and read that, you level up your light armor by one point. Which is really good if you're like me and you like to play a stealth a uh, character that uses light armor and then there's also some more there's some blister warts and there's some hide boots if you don't have anything and then there's a tanning rack so you could use this to bring your leather over here and tan out some stuff but there's a chest right here and I recommend sneaking before you open it and it's gonna be a novice level chest and then you're gonna go ahead and pick the lock and then it's gonna have some Decent items. Um, ignore some of the items I get in this video because I do have a bunch of mods on that I play with. And I will add a list of all the mods I have in the description below. So once you open that crate, sorry, there's going to be some bandits that spawn behind you. Now the bandits won't spawn until you open the crate so you're free to loot everything around here first. But as soon as you open up that chest, there's going to be three bandits that spawn here. And... Early on, if you play on a higher difficulty like I do, it could be quite the challenge. But the best thing you could do is just, if you're playing an archer, go ahead and just swerve back and forth and try to dodge all the arrows that they're going to throw at you. And if you're playing melee, uh, if you have heavy armor on, you should be fine. Just run up and tank them and try to block the arrows as they shoot at you. I think they'll pull daggers if you get close enough. So we're just going to go ahead and knock out this last one right here. You don't yield around here, you die. Awesome. So now that we knocked those guys out, let's go ahead and loot their corpses, and voila! One of them has a hunting bow, which is great if you're playing archer. You can go ahead and get a free bow upgrade from the longbow. It's one damage, but you know, one damage is better than not one damage. So we go ahead and loot the rest of them for all the stuff that you'd like to have. And then you head on towards the road that comes out of Helgen Keep. So let's run up here. All right, so we made it back to the road. We're just gonna go ahead and follow it a little bit and be sure to grab all the alchemy ingredients along the road. There's a lot. All right, so once you make it to the crossroads here, if you turn left, you'll go ahead and run along this road right over here. And just go ahead and follow the road. And then once you get up to this hill, there will be a thistle bush right here. Go ahead and harvest that. And then you come up here to a bunch of dead worshippers. You can loot them if you want. Some of them, sometimes they have gold on them. But most of the times, they, they usually don't have anything. Of course, as I say that, they all have gold on them this time. And there's a shrine of Talos that you can worship here to remove all diseases. And I think you gain like some cooldown to your shot power. But there's a dead Thalmor soldier here. And if you go ahead and search this guy, you'll find a random piece of equipment that's enchanted with a random enchantment every time you see him. So on each playthrough, you kind of get an RNG roll to get a item. And on my roll, on my uh, playthrough right here, I got Iron Helmet of Experience, which is a modded um enchantment it lets me gain two percent more experience but if you're playing vanilla you'll get a vanilla enchantment 
But once again, like I said, I'll have all the mods that I have installed currently and active in the description. So once you loot that, you can come on over down the road. And then up on this hill right here, if you can make it, go ahead and jump that. There will be a bandit camp. They're going to be hostile, so if you try to stay a little back, if you're an archer, you can go ahead and get some stealth attacks. Or I guess not, actually. I and then we got to make our way up here, kill the last bandit. He's hiding in the tree. He's role-playing a wood elf. Go ahead and take him out. And then we go up and we loot him. And this guy should have the treasure map. It's random on which one has it. You just have to kill all three and then loot them all. But one of them will have a treasure map. So, and then we're going to want to come up here. And there's some black mage robes that you can grab. You can disenchant them or you can sell them. They have a good price. And then there's a coin purse. And then there's a little satchel that I have always overlooked. I've never actually seen it. That'll have some... Uh, great useful items early on and then there's a skill book called night falls on sentinel if you read that your one-handed increases for a point which is good if you're playing a red guard one-handed or something like that so after you've killed the bandits and you loot all of the valuables that you can find in the camp we're gonna make our way over here to the guardian stones you don't have to follow the exact same path I took. You don't have to go over the rock. You can go on the road. You'll see it if you start playing. And then there's three stones. There is the warrior stone, the mage stone, and the thief stone. Now, we'll start off with the thief stone because it's the one I'm going to be taking. Those under the sign of the thief will learn all stealth skills 20% faster. So what it means by stealth skills is your pickpocket, your sneak skills, and... A lot, and one of them that a lot of people don't know it gives you is archery as well. You will increase your archery up a lot faster with this. A lot of people think it's the warrior stone that does it, but no, it's actually the thief stone. And then the mage stone, that'll increase all your destruction, restoration, conjuration, and alchemy, enchanting. I'm pretty sure it's en it has enchanting and alchemy in it. I'm not too sure on everyone. And then you got your warrior stone, which is your heavy armor, your one-handed, two-handed. And this is the one people thought the archery would be in, but no, nah, it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the, still, uh, the thief stone that gives archery. And yeah. So once you grab those, you can make your way over here to the Ember Shard Mine. I'm going to go ahead and stealth attack this guy right here. Hopefully I can kill him pretty quickly. Actually, I don't get my stealth attack off, which kind of blows. It's no matter, though. We're going to kill him. I thought he'd be a lot tougher than that. There's some alchemy plants outside the door. But we're going to go ahead and make our way inside the Ember Shard Mine. Okay, and then once we're inside, we'll just go ahead and follow the path. There's going to be some fly amanita in this mine. And then as you make your way down here, we'll hear two guys talking about how the door and the one guy's worried that people will sneak in, the other guy's trying to reassure him. But it's funny because as he's reassuring him that nobody can get in here, we stealth attack and kill them. <laughs> and it's just the irony in this little bit right here is just so funny. So we're going to knock this guy out, hopefully. So we take him out. You can loot him. They'll have some basic you know, equipment on them, starter equipment. And then I like to come down here, grab the pickaxe. There will always be one here. And then this mine is filled with iron ore. And it's so good to grab all this ore. And there's some sleeping mats, which you can sleep on. And you'll gain your well-rested buff, which will increase your experience gain in total. And then if you come over this way, there's some more potion ingredients, and then there's a coin purse, and there's a book called The Tattered Journal. And it's basically going on that miner's life and how 
the mine collapsed and some something like that. I don't remember the full details, but it's along those lines. So you want to come up here after though and pull this lever. And I just like to jump down here because there's two guys that run through here, so I get a good like straightforward position to just pelt them with arrows and get stealth attacks. This guy's so confused. He doesn't even see me stand sitting right in front of him. So once those two guys are dispatched of, we can come down here. And actually, I'll go ahead and show you a cool way. There's a little guard on the other side of that door. And if you go ahead and sneak attack, if you sneak attack the wall in here, he should get up and turn around and unlock the gate. Sometimes he unlocks the gate. I've seen him do it before. I'm going to try to get him to unlock it. There he goes. He unlocked it. Just so everybody knows that I'm telling the truth and he'll actually unlock the gate. I personally don't kill him that way. I like to kill him with sneak attacks when I'm going in. And then... I like to use the gates for lock picking skills to min max a little bit. And then there's a coin purse in here. There will be a spell tome for clairvoyance. This should have, it might have potion ingredients, but that also could be one of my mods. So don't take my word for it. And you get a boss crate here. And as you can see, I have a lot of stuff in here. Only because of my mods though. It probably isn't filled this much if you're playing vanilla, but I, I highly recommend that you play a vanilla playthrough, but then as soon as you play that vanilla playthrough just to play the game the way it was meant to play, go ahead and download some mods because mods just literally make the game so much fun. Anyways, once you loot this room and you grab some weapons, you want to go ahead and run over this way and there's some more iron ore. And then there's going to be a, a smith right down here. He's busy making some steel so we're gonna go ahead and take her out apparently it's a female nothing wrong with that female smiths are pretty cool q q my character is a female smith and then there's gonna be another guy right there on the bridge you don't have to wait for him to walk around but i i like to kill him from far away and this guy is gonna try to rush us if i could hit my shots one, two. Seen on strikes. Okay, and that sword is standing up on its own. That's pretty cool. So once you come down here, there's going to be some iron ingots on the workbench. And then there's going to be two bits of iron ore. And there's going to be a smithing book right here. It'll increase your smithing by one. It's called light armor forging. And it's pretty valuable. Worth 70 gold. And then I'm pretty sure there's some iron ore down here. I think it's over this way. I th yeah, it's right over there on the wall. You go ahead and grab that if you want. We'll make our way up here. And a little loot path I like to do is run up here. Jump over onto this little ledge where the waterfall's at. And there will be a chest with a novice lock on it and a coin purse. There will be another iron ore vein right here on the wall. You can't miss it. And we'll make our way back over this way try to get the most efficient timing and then there's a table back here and i didn't know about this little room for the longest time because i would always just run through here and i would i wouldn't pay attention but i finally looked around and i found that there's some pretty <laughs> rare gems back here that are worth quite a bit and some gold and then there's a crate and then there's a bunch of alchemy stuff inside these barrels fish and food and all that so once you've looted this place go ahead and make your way up here to the exit there's going to be a vein of iron right here. And I think there's another one in here. Or I, I guess not, actually. I thought there was another one. Anyway, we come outside the mine. And if we make our way directly north. Is that a dead fox? What the heck? Who killed that thing? Or better yet, what killed that thing? Anyways, we head north and... After about 30 seconds or so, you're going to run into Riverwood. 
And right now, you're probably around level 3, 4. I'm going to go ahead and level up my stamina and put another point in the sneak. It's really cool how that works. So once you're in the Riverwood, you can go ahead and talk to Feindel. And he'll have a problem with Sven. And it's a little side quest to earn an fo early follower. I'll let you guys do the quest if you've never seen it before. But basically, once you finish it, you can go ahead and earn him as a follower. And there's a smith here. You can sell all of the stuff you've picked up from the tutorial level and going through here, like the uh, mine. And then if you side up with the storm cloaks, you'll talk with Girder over here. But if you side up with the Imperials, you'll be talking to the smith over there. Anyways, we're going to talk to her. Do you have any supplies I could take? She's going to have a bunch of food. Sometimes she'll have uh, a gem, some lock picks, minor healing potions, and a ring. Basically, you're going to tell her the dragon attack, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I've seen this stuff so many times that it's just no point in even watching it. And now that we've got to make it over to Whiterun, if you guys remembered, we killed a little bandit camp. And we found a treasure map. So we're going to go ahead and look at that treasure map. And basically what the treasure map is saying that in the middle, you know, I'm pointing out with my finger, but you guys can't see my finger. It has the little town of Riverwood on the bottom. And then there's a little X and then it shows a log. So basically, I've never been one to actually know how to read the maps. Like it doesn't make sense to me. But I do know where it's at. So if you cross the river and run a little west towards the... Uh, dungeon marker on your map you'll come across a fallen tree and inside the fallen tree is a loot chest and the loot chest is leveled so early on it's not gonna have too much of good stuff in it it's just gonna have basic a gem some gold maybe a couple ingots and then if you want you can run over this way I'm gonna do it for the video's sake just to give that best best start possible like I said, this video is going to be kind of long, but it's very informative. So we're going to run up here. There's a little a hut icon on the mini-map that you can see. Well, not really. It's not really a mini-map, but it's more of a HUD, but I call it a mini-map. So we make our way over to this. There's a hunter here. It's random. I haven't seen that before. But anywho, as you can see, there's a little hut up here. And outside of the hut, there's going to be a lady. She's going to go by the name of Anise. She's going to act friendly at first, but trust me, it's better off if you just go ahead and pick her off from afar. As soon as you attack her, she's going to she's gonna turn on you, she's going to turn hostile, and she's going to say out the quote as she just did, you'll never learn my secret, or something like that. I'm actually going to die, because Master Difficulty. She's really strong, <laughs> apparently. Anyway, she's going to have some mage robes and a steel dagger. And inside the cabin, there's going to be a bunch of uh, alchemy ingredients. There's going to be a little bit of soup over here, some more food, and there's going to be a book called The Song of the Alchemists. When you read that, it's going to give you a point in alchemy, and I would go ahead and take this book because I'm pretty sure you can use it for a side quest later. And then you're going to want to go ahead and come back here to her cellar. Unlock it. It's a novice lock. Shouldn't be too hard. I say that as I'm about to break my lock pick. And then come down into the cellar. And down here, there's going to be an early enchanting table. And then also an early alchemy lab. But as well, there's going to be a, a note called Anise's letter. And in the note, Helgi, dear, why do you hesitate? You can feel the power coursing in your blood. You have only to reach out and grasp it. Renounce that boy of yours and come. Come live with me in the forest. My sister will be here soon. Together, we can form a proper coven, and your training will truly begin. And basically, the letter is, she's a witch, basically. So, when you, the reason you just kill her is because she's a witch. She's not good. And there's going to be some weak poison, a paralysis poison. This is a pretty good one. It's a potent. And there's going to be some death bell. It's pretty, pretty good uh, poison recipe. Another apothecary satchel. And as I said, you can use the enchanter to go ahead and break down some of your early items you've gained. Which I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Because 
I'm going to get a full inventory soon. So I'm going to go ahead and break down that and that. Actually, I didn't have that much on me. Anyways, once you've looted that and done everything you've wanted to do, you want to go ahead and exit the cabin. And then right here is also optional if you want to take this route. You could go back around through White Run or not White Run Riverwood and take the road. It'll lead you all the way up around here. I personally don't mind. I don't care for going that way. This is a bit of a cheese, but it speeds up the early game a little bit. And once you've played the early game so many times like me, it's just kind of uh, starting out. So you just want to make your way up the rocks. And I have a theory in Skyrim is that if there's a rock, you can climb it. So the climbing is really weird in this game. You just got to like kind of mess with it a little bit and do some weird angles. And most of the time, you'll find a way up to anything. And eventually, you'll lead yourself all the way up to Bleak Falls Barrow really quickly. Like, it takes no time to get here at all if you go that route. And there's going to be three bandits. You just want to take them out pretty quickly. They're not very strong. Okay, I missed that. Only because it hit the wall. Hello, mister. He missed. He's bad. He's going to miss again. Yep. And now he's down for the count. Take him out. I'm not gonna. Even, I can't even be bothered. I'm gonna run up this way, and just get all up in her face. She might beat me here. I might have to use a potion. Obviously, if I was trying my hardest to, you know, min max this sneak skill up, I would come. To, I would probably get myself up here and before I start to attack, so I can get up further away. Anyways, walk through the doors of the temple. And right off the bat, you can see there's two bandits over there. Go ahead and get a stealth attack on one of them. Okay, I hit the barrel, and it went flying in the air. That's pretty funny. But anyways, they're probably just going to run straight at me. So as soon as she tries to walk this corner, I'll hit her or miss. But dispose of her. The trash. There's a bunch of skeevers in here. I like to loot them for the skeever tails, which can be used to make poisons. But you don't have to if you don't want to. There's more bedrolls in here. There's a woodcutter's axe, which you'd want to grab if you're an archer. And there's a chest right there with a novice lock you can pick. I like to grab the axe because it lets you cut firewood. And you can use the firewood to make your own arrows. And then go ahead and make your way into the dungeon. There's a, some burial urns right here. I'm pretty sure that one's the only one that ever has loot in it. So I'm not even going to check those. You can if you want. And then just go ahead and run... Down here, some more skeevers. There's a shelf over here. There's another burial urn that's empty. There's some stamina potion. And then go ahead and run, 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 run. And then there's going to be a bandit down here. Normally, he'll go up there and he'll pull the lever and he'll die to the trap. But I like to go ahead and just sneak attack him, kill him, because I earn more XP. And it's not, it's not that hard of a fight. Most of the time, he'll get stuck on those stairs, and you'll just kill him anyway. So, we get a level up. I'm going to go ahead and level up some more stamina and stealth. Actually, I can't do stealth. Dang. Well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and hit some critical shot as well. And then probably do some light armor, just because. But the puzzle here, you can see it on the ground. It's pretty simple. You see the snake, you see the snake, and you see the whale. You're going to want to match the first, second, and third with the first, second, and third. I usually just do one and then flip these two twice because that'll solve it for you. And then you just hit the lever. You can come up here. There's a potion over there. I'm not going to go grab it because there's no point for me to do it. There's a chest over here, some soul gems, which is really good early on if you want to do some enchanting. Especially since you found the early enchanting table at the start from the cabin. And you can also use that cabin as a player home, I forgot to mention. But there's going to be a, a skill book over here called Thief. You read it, it'll increase your pickpocket by one. And pickpocket skill is really hard to level up early on. So you want to come down these steps. There's going to be some skeevers. Hopefully they don't poison me. 
I don't think they're venomous though. Another arson skewer in the game, the can poison. You got a critical on that guy. You can loot them for their tails. And there's going to be a weak prowess poison, a scroll of fireball. So once we come over here, there's going to be a skeleton. And this is another thing that I missed a lot when I'm playing. You can't even really see it. But if you walk up, there's a chest right here. And if you break the web right here, you can see it a lot better. But you can loot that. And then right here, there's a bit of a web. So you want to go ahead and do that. And then you can go in stealth here. And there's going to be a giant spider that drops down from the ceiling. We're going to go ahead and hit him with our bow. And hopefully he doesn't see me anytime soon. But he does a lot of damage. And he's really tanky. Especially if you're playing on a higher difficulty. He is a really tough boss early on. So I like to use this little room to cheese it a little bit. Because I'm pretty sure he'll like one hit me. If he hits me with a melee attack. I mean he does a lot of damage regardless. It's a really scary fight. Hopefully I don't run out of arrows. That would suck. He keeps like juking me out. Like he almost just killed me there. He almost got me. Anyways, he's dead. We can go ahead and loot him. He'll have some frostbite venom. There'll be some urns in here you can search. And then there's a bunch of web stacks that you can search. And they'll have um, some uh, spider eggs. We're going to go ahead and cut this rope. And he's going to tell you he'll give you the claw. But we all know that he's not going to give the claw. So we just kill him instantly. We don't even give him a chance. Just, it's just a nuisance to chase him. And you'll get the claw. You'll get his journal. And he'll have some hide armor. Okay, so once we do that, we make our way in here. Another soul gem that you can grab. An urn that's lootable. And then we run through here. And there's a Draugr. Go ahead and stealth attack him while we can. And kill him. Kill it with fire. And there's going to be another one down there. There's a third one on the right. I can't see him from here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that one out. And then come over here and loot this guy. Try to get an arrow back if I can. Don't want to waste any. I've only got six. I wasn't collecting as much as I should have been. So once we kill these Draugr, we don't want to shoot. We go ahead and loot them all, try to get some of our arrows back. There's going to be a Restless Draugr, depending on your level, I'm pretty sure, that spawns over here. We're going to try to stealth attack him. We're actually probably going to run out of arrows, which really sucks. But we'll go ahead and have him run this way, and you can use this trap here. He should walk across it. If you get far enough from him, he'll try to come... And then he'll just kill himself, <laughs> basically. And then you can go ahead and pick up some of your arrows back. Make sure not to hit the trap yourself. It will probably one hit you this early on. It does a lot of damage. I picked up some arrows with that. Oh, there. They and there's some Draugr in here. There's about, there's three. So we're going to go ahead and take them out. And I've actually run out of arrows, which kind of sucks. So... I'm just going to go ahead and equip this Nord one. Actually, I'm not because it weighs more, so it'll swing a lot slower than the Iron Sword. And right now, I'm going to struggle a little bit because I don't have any, um, what's it called, arrows. Did that guy resist my paralysis potion? Oh my gosh. Anyways, we're just going to use this poison. He resisted the poison too. But we almost got another level up. This guy will drop us some arrows, so that's good. Let's just try not to die to this guy. That would be a real shame. And we've got another level up. And this guy will have a ancient Nord bow and some arrows. So we're going to go ahead and level up. Do stamina again. And I'm going to go ahead and hit up with my stealth. I'm going to do sneak attacks with one-handed to do more damage. 
And this mod's cool that I've got on because it'll make your magic attacks do extra damage as well if you choose to use magic. And I'm going to go ahead and equip the Nord Bow and the Nord Arrows because they're a little bit stronger than the ones I've got. And I'm going to go ahead and run through the rest of this little bit right here and I'll speed it up a little bit. Okay, so I'd just like to mention, if you do like to do alchemy and enchanting, right now is a good opportunity to grab a bunch of these glowing mushrooms. The glowing mushrooms are used to make fortify enchanting potions, which is really, really strong if you go ahead and max out your alchemy. It'll let you create a bunch of really strong potions and further go ahead and use these to make the fortify enchanting potions to make your enchanting better, which you can loop around and use the enchanting potions to make your potions better and then vice versa. So always just, if you like alchemy, go ahead and just grab all these mushrooms. And if you come down here, there's a dead skeever, a skeleton, and there's a chest right here that's got a novice lock on them. Sometimes I come down here, sometimes I don't. But if you're playing early on, you can go ahead and just get some early loot from there. And like I said, there's more of the glowing mushrooms in this area as well. So once you run up past that area, there will be a Restless Draugr in here. So a mini boss fight early on. These Restless Draugr are not a joke. So we're going to go ahead and get as many sneak attacks as we can on him before he finds us. Hopefully we'll just knock him out and kill him. Looks like we're going to, which is very awesome. So we can go ahead and loot some of our arrows back. We can go ahead and go through the door. And after we go through the door, we go ahead and run down through here. And we come across another one of these little swinging axe blades or whatever they're called. So we're going to go ahead and run through all those. And then this guy is going to wake up from his eternal slumber, and I don't have my arrows equipped. And we're going to knock him off the plane of existence. And there's going to be two more up here. They should make their way towards us. Go ahead and shoot this guy, kill him, and kill his buddy. Awesome! Awesome! And if you come over here, there's a potion of resistance cold, which will give you frost resistance. I want to go ahead and loot these guys and grab some more arrows because I am deathly low on arrows. And then over here, then turn to the left, and we run through here. And then open this door, you'll hear the music when you walk in. Or not really music, but a sound effect. And the door code is you just spam them twice. So you do all of them once, and then you do all of them twice. And then when you go ahead and use the golden claw that you picked up off the guy, it should open the door. Alternatively, if like if you don't know the code, obviously when you first play the game like I did, you don't know the code. You go ahead and you open your inventory and you go to misc and there will be the golden claw in there. And you can go ahead and inspect it with whatever button it is on whatever uh, console you're playing on, whether it's PC, PS4, or Xbox. And then once you're inside here, this is like the end room of the dungeon. But a lot of people overlook, if you just run off to the side over here, you can run up here, past the waterfall, get up on this little ledge. Sometimes it's a pain. And then right behind this rock, there's a hidden chest. It's a novice lock chest. You can open that if you want. And then we come over here. And then loot the boss crate. It's going to have some cool stuff in it. I want to grab the orcish bow and stuff out of it for myself. And then a potion of true shot, which is really good for me, actually. I'm going to go ahead and equip that. So I'm going to grab my orcish bow I got. Once again, that's from a mod. 
So when you play, you probably won't have that stuff in there. And then walk close to the sarcophagus. I'm going to go ahead and drink my potion of true shot. Just so I can go ahead and kill this overlord a little bit faster. As he is also not a joke. Like even his shout just did like like uh, about 8% of my, my health. Which is insane. And he's got a two-handed weapon, so when he swings that thing, he is going to hit. When you get food for a dog like that, don't panic. If you had your cursor on him, just go ahead and let go, let your arrow go. It'll hit him. So we grab that, and we grab our dragon stone early on. You can grab the war axe that he drops, or whatever it's called, battle axe. And then if you make your way over to the second waterfall over here, there's another lock. Oh, it's not actually locked. Hmm. There's another crate. So you go ahead and loot that if you want. And then make your way up the steps. And then there's the handle to get out. It'll open up this rock. Just make your way through the cave. There's a chest down here that's not got a lock on it. It'll have some stuff in it if you want. And then right here, there's a bunch of alchemy ingredients. Just come to the side, loot all those. You probably don't want the skull, but if you want the skull, you could take the skull. And so that's it. You did the dungeon, and you got the dragon stone already. The dragon stone will be very important here soon. So once you're out of the dungeon, the last thing I like to do before I head to Whiterun is make my way down. Run over this way. There's some corundum ore you can mine. With the pickaxe you found earlier. I just have to walk away. And they'll kill you. So go ahead and enter this house, but it shouldn't pass. And then as you come in, there's going to be some alchemy ingredients down here. There's going to be a rune on the floor. Try not to touch it if you can. Sometimes it's hard to avoid it. And then when you walk in, there's going to be a skeleton right there. And there's going to be one down there. Depending on your sneak level, they might not see you. But, yeah. And then there's going to be a chest right here. It's going to have a trap trigger on it. So, if you want, you could pick it. If not, just look out because this little spiky ball is going to drop when you open it. I personally pick it for the XP, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And then when you come down here, be very careful because there is a necromancer. So I'm going to take out his skeleton first, and then I'm going to start taking him out. He's very, very strong depending on what difficulty you're playing on. He, this can be a very tough fight. He does a lot of damage with his ice shard that he shoots at you. And when he gets low, he does start to heal himself. He will resurrect the skeleton. As you can see, he was almost dead. He basically full healed himself. And he does juke out a lot. And those little ice shards that he shoots, they do a lot of damage. And you can probably tell that I, my damage is already starting to fall off. I'm getting a bunch of limp arrows for some reason. Hopefully he doesn't heal. Looks like he's going to. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this fight up. All right, so we go ahead and we've got him here. We want to kill him before he heals himself again. And then you're going to want to loot him. He's going to have some stuff on him. He's obviously not going to have the same loot table as I have. And then you want to go make your way right here, turn left. This is an easy to miss boss chest. I've always run through this cave before and I would just be sprinting through here and I wouldn't even pay any attention to it. So make sure you loot this boss chest over here. It's going to have some, you know, stuff in it that you can use i'm not gonna worry about it you can run up here there is a skeleton there's a warrior's charge which is a skill book which will increase your conjuration by one point upon using it and then there will be an enchanted dagger right here and a health potion and a soul gem and this is where when i'm doing my main run i will come i'll have all my enchanted items that i've gotten from the dungeon from the start and then I'll do a mass um, disenchant. 
and then it'll level up my enchanting a little bit and then you can do like a little bit of enchanting with all the soul gems you've gotten but once you've done that go ahead and make your way over here it's not really anything to worry about there's a couple skeletons but skeletons are super super weak in this game so there might as well just be nothing here like look at this guy look at bones over here running around doesn't even know what's happening I'm gonna make him think he's gonna hit me and then I'm gonna kill him so mind this soul gem right here it's on a little trap stool it will shoot at you when you run past it and then there's not really anything left in there there's another there's a little thing if you've got a mod but I'm not gonna worry about it I'll let you guys figure that stuff out for yourselves just because it's mods and I'm not doing a mod run through so once you go ahead and exit here you're at the exit of or you're, I guess it's an entrance as well there's two entrances entrances there's some tundra cottons there's quite a bit of it around here but if you follow this little dirt path and if you follow this road it takes you straight to white run so I'm gonna go ahead and level up here and I'm going to put a point into eagle eye and then I'm gonna go ahead and follow this road after I kill these wolves that decided to be very rude and attack me I'm actually out of arrows which kind of blows so we'll pull out our sword and just beat the hell out of them god dang what a way to die what a way to die come here doggy I actually mistimed that pretty unfortunate but anyways we're gonna follow this road and I'll speed this up so we can get to white run all right so we're pulling up to white run and instantly I can see that the Khajiits are here so if you want you can go ahead and talk to Rasad and you can trade with the Khajiits they'll have a bunch of random knickknacks and stuff like that weapons armor potions they just have all an assortment of items you can buy from them but we're gonna go ahead and make our way into the main city and as you approach the gate the guards gonna come down he's gonna tell you that you need to be wary not to be here because the dragons Basically, you can either persuade him that you have information or something and that you need to come into the city, or you can just tell him that Riverwood's in danger and he will let you in. So once we open up the gate to Whiterun, run run over here, you'll see these two talking talk to Adrienne then you ask her do you work the forge all day and then she'll tell you that she does and she'll ask you to take a sword to her dad up in Dragon's Reach so I always grab the quest just because it's a really easy one to do it takes no effort at all there's a bunch of alchemy ingredients inside the city if you want to go ahead and loot all of those so we're gonna make our way up here and there's even more alchemy stuff by the tree there's a shrine to Talos right there you can pray to if you want. I know I came out doing this the other day on stream and I had a disease called the rattles so I went ahead and prayed to the shrine to get rid of the disease. Anyways, you make your way up into this big building up here. It's called Dragon's Reach. And as you make your way in here, you just run up to the main throne. The Dark Elf, Irolith, is going to approach you. You're just going to tell her you have news from Helgen about the dragon attack. And then she'll tell you to talk to this guy. But before we talk to the Jarl, we're going to go ahead and talk to this guy and tell him we have a sword from his daughter. And he'll give you 20 gold. And then I think it counts as a quest for buying a house later on. And he's going to ask you about the uh, dragon incident. You're going to tell him what happened. And then you're going to wait for him to talk. 
So once they're done talking, he'll talk to you. He'll basically congratulate you for finding him. Then he'll give you a random piece of equipment. And then he'll ask you to follow him over here to his uh, court wizard's room. So once he talks to you, this guy's going to say the Jarl thinks you can help me. And then he's going to tell you to go fetch something in an uh, ancient stone tablet. And you're going to ask him where it is. And then he's going to tell you to go to Bleak Falls Barrow. But we've already been to Bleak Falls Barrow. So you're going to say, oh, do you mean this old stone? And then you give the dragon stone to Farangar. And then he'll be shocked. So you ask him what's next. And then right now is about the end. He's going to run up here. Everybody's going to run up here. And you're going to usually have to wait on everybody to get up here. But if you want to kind of speed run it, just run up here, come outside of the Great Perch, and then go back in. And then they're going to all be talking and go out one more time. And then go back in again. And as soon as you come in, he's going to tell you that there's no time and he wants you to go with Aerolith. And then he'll give you a random piece of equipment again. And then you basically just skipped all the dialogue. And now you're ready to go fight your first big boss of the game. So anyways, you just come outside. And after all that, you should probably be around level 7-ish, maybe. But, hope you guys enjoyed. That is a very, very informative and uh, lucrative loot path and starting path for Skyrim from the very beginning right out of Helgen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been Yukino RL, and I hope it was very informative and that uh, you learned something new. Especially the little speedrun part up there. That's something I recently just learned on my own. It's very helpful because sometimes it takes a while for that guy to run up there. It could take like a minute. <laughs> and you don't want to stand around for a minute. But anyways, if you did like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like. Leave a comment if you want more content like this. I can do a lot more like dungeon runs and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And later.